Hey, I'm Dr. Chatterjee. Welcome to my office hours. Well, Dr. Chatterjee, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I'm definitely looking forward to being able to get to know a little bit more about you outside of academia and outside of your research. So I want to start the conversation by asking you what inspired you to pursue engineering and then ultimately become a professor in engineering. Yeah, so I have always been uh, passionate about the sun silly, studying. Like I, I love reading, mm. getting new knowledge. I love learning new things. And I could like sit and read and work for hours together. Mm. So I kind of knew that I always wanted to be in a profession okay. where there are no boundaries to learning new things. Oh, okay, and guess okay. what? As a professor, you're okay. paid to study, you're paid right. to learn, you're paid right. to teach others to be right. excited about new things. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a dream job for me also. Is there any other profession that you would want to pursue or want to, to do? Yeah, I would be a programmer or a coder. Okay. I would just, you know, I like the fact that, again, coding has that same thing about my personality, mm -hmm. that I can kind of be anywhere. I can create anything. I like the the passion, the intensity that goes with creating something that was never there before. Mm. So I think a programmer, coder, nice thing is as a professor, I can do all of that. So I'm, again, kind of yeah. going back to my current profession, but yeah, gotcha. I think a programmer would be a great gotcha. uh, alternative. Yeah. So that, I, I like doing things in addition to academics. So things that I look like doing in tandem is because mm -hmm. a lot of my academic work is writing. Right. Um, most of my work is computational. So whether it's coding or writing papers or writing proposals, a mm -hmm. lot of it is writing. Mm -hmm. So in my free time, I like running, like literally running. So I like, um, I, and I don't like, just running, I like competing with others. So I have a running group oh. and I pretty much run about twice a, a week okay. during the running season. I'm so when you're running, here. when you're running, what do you do? Do you just like kind of zone out and just think about different things? Do you listen to podcasts? Is there a certain kind of music you like to listen to? Uh, when I'm running, I think of these huge things I want to do, like things I want to discover. You know, yeah. that doesn't happen because a lot of the times I'm trying to beat other people. Okay. So a few things that I do <laughs> okay. is I listen to podcasts. So mm. uh, if I'm on my longer run, okay. so I, I don't just go out and do long runs. I have a lot of respect for people who just have nothing in their ears and just keep running. <laughs> right. I get bored. So I need continuous entertainment. I actually just started li listening to a podcast. It's from Coastlaw Ventures. Okay. And uh, okay. I, this, I wrote it down. I want to read that book, Shelley Archambault. Um, this podcast name is Instigators of Change. Okay. And I love the name. It's like almost made for me. Unapologetically ambitious. Mm. That sounds so good. Mm. It does. So it does. I want to uh, read that book. So she wrote that book and I heard about it in uh, Kosla Ventures. Okay. I think they have a new one. So the one before this last one. Mm -hmm. And the name of the podcast is Instigators of Change. So that's a new podcast that's going to enter my podcast repo. Oh. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges that you've ever had to face? I think the days I'm like really happy is when I've like worked and worked out like crazy. Like I feel like one of my challenges is I can't like just do nothing. Like, okay. I can't just enjoy doing nothing. Okay. Like, I can't just be at leisure. Maybe, I, I don't know if that is a phase in my life, but I feel like that thing that where I really have to do stuff every mm. minute of my life. In fact, I even listen to, I do Duolingo. I, I'm doing I do Duolingo French. right now too. I'm doing Spanish, I'm doing Duolingo <laughs> So right my now. son yeah. literally told me, Mama, that's bad for you, that every minute you have to do something. Yeah. I feel like it's almost challenging for me to sit still and do nothing. Mm. I find it impossible to just, you know, sit still, and maybe just chat on the phone or, you know, just be like a normal person. Okay. I feel like I have something missing in me. Like I okay. have to be on the go. I have to listen to something. Okay. I have to, you know, do something. Okay. That's interesting. I'm honestly, <laughs> I'm the exact opposite. I am perfectly content just sitting, doing nothing. I don't like people bothering me. I can just sit and just exist. So is there anything that you do to kind of combat that? Like, Maybe that talking sense? to my mom. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, that, that she takes me down. She no, told it's me, fair. hey, do you still sit? Do you still write? You know, like I, I, I like the dancing parts. As a kid, mm -hmm. I learned to sing. I learned to dance. I, I was from a Bengali household, so okay. you pretty much taught everything. Okay. In addition to math reading, mm -hmm. you got to dance, you got to sing. You know, like all of that. Right. So that's typically a typical Bengali household. You would okay. have dance lessons, music lessons, song lessons, uh, dance lessons. Oh my gosh, art lessons, all of that. Uh, so I feel like sometimes when I'm like running after my papers and everything all those juices I feel like dry out mm. but I've still written poetry like as of the other day I had a deadline and in five minutes I wrote a poem. I definitely love to hear a little bit more about um, when you started writing poetry or maybe just kind of a little bit more on 
kind of your process of writing poetry or maybe where you get inspiration from when you write your poetry? So it's funny, I didn't know my mom can uh, is an artist, she can draw stuff, okay. because she was all about biology and chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandma, uh, she d studied uh, logic and philosophy, but she could write, mm. like she could write very spontaneously. Mm. I, I feel like I got her gene, like I can write like one long page of poetry mm -hmm. in like five minutes. Mm. Like it just has to naturally happen to me. If you suddenly tell me, hey, write this, I might be like, I don't know, but if it comes to me, yeah. I can just write stuff like mm. really fast. So thank you so much for talking with me this afternoon. I definitely love getting to know a little bit more about you during your office hours. Awesome. Thanks, Mimi. This was awesome. Yes, it was. Thank you. <laughs>